Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the Ants Airplanes de Havilland DHH-2 Tiger Moth. The aircraft has just released for the sim, it is the second output from Ants Airplanes for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I was a big fan of Ants work both in FSX and P3D so I've really been looking forward to the Tiger Moth ever since it was announced for the sim. Despite the Tiger Moth's relative simplicity the product offers quite a range of features, of course we'll be looking at those throughout our flight today. We are going to be carrying out a full review of the aircraft here so we'll firstly be taking a look at some of the external fixtures and fittings as well as the modelling and texturing. We'll then do the same internally. After that we're going to be carrying out a full flight through from the cold and dark start right the way through to landing. For those of you who have been watching the channel for quite some time now you may recall that we actually previously took the Ants airplanes to Havilland Tiger Moth for a flight. In that video though we were using a converted freeware FSX version of the aircraft whereas today of course we're going to be taking a look at the native Microsoft Flight Simulator product. I thought though for the sake of interest it might be nice to carry out the same flight once again so we are back on the ground at Abergavenny airfield and we're going to be taking our Tiger Moth on a fairly short but rather scenic flight through the Welsh Valleys up towards the Talgarth Gliding Club. As always I do hope you enjoy the video and find it to be of use, if you do please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. From a distance the DH82 does certainly look the part and we'll be seeing much more of the external model throughout the flight. Before we jump in though we are just going to touch on a couple of the external features that we might not otherwise see here today. Starting with the engine then, as you'll have already seen we can actually open up both the left and the right engine covers, we can also remove them altogether. The care has been taken to model the de Havilland Gypsy Major engine which is great to see. And somewhat similarly to the Wing 42 Boeing 247 you can actually click on certain parts of the engine and the prop as well to actuate them for the flight. So for example you can click on the fuel primer that would usually be operated by a member of the ground crew and you can also actuate the prop to hand crank it for the start. The Tiger Moth also makes use of custom pilot models, generally speaking they're done quite nicely. Again not up to the very highest standards but nevertheless it is very nice to see custom equipment and clothing. Also the pilot models do actually have a little bit of animation which is great. And both models are visual both internally and externally should you so wish. Which means you can not only see the passenger on board the aircraft but you can also see yourself. As discussed the engine cowling can actually be removed in its entirety, same goes for the pilots. The doors can actually be opened on both the left and the right side of the cockpit. We also have a couple of fixtures and fittings including chocks and a pitot cover. And there are also a number of items which can be customised on the aircraft. But we can talk more about those once we take a look at the onboard tablet. Modelling detail of the aircraft is overall very nice. You can see here for example the linkages, the bolts, the corrugation there on the fuel tank. We've also got the fuel line going down towards the engine. Generally speaking I find that the modelling detail holds up quite nicely. There are one or two areas that look a little bit rougher. Again not right up to the very high standards that we've seen in the sim. Really for me the only thing I could fault significantly with the externals of the aircraft. I do find as far as PBR materials go a lot of the texturing on the aircraft doesn't look to be all that true to life. For example it is quite hard to distinguish between the canvas areas and the metal areas of the aircraft. And similarly as well some of the texturing fairly low resolution. The numbering there for example is a little bit fuzzy. I don't think the texturing detracts hugely from the beauty of the Tiger Moth, the aircraft still does look very nice. But again it just doesn't look quite as photorealistic as many other add-ons that we're now seeing in the sim. Internally I think Ants Aeroplanes has done a really nice job, I think the cockpit looks very nice. It's pretty basic but of course that's true to life and everything in the cockpit seemed to be functional so far as I could tell which is great. You do have the options for both an onboard tablet and an onboard GPS both of which are located just down on the right hand side there besides the pilot seat. The GPS is fairly self explanatory but we'll run through the tablet as that's certainly got some nice functionality. Firstly we have our cockpit preferences page which allows us to both hide the passenger and the pilot as well as the GPS. We can also choose to open up both the left and the right pilot and co-pilot cockpit doors. As well as choosing through a number of different cockpit instruments including the airspeed indicator which can be either period accurate or modern both in knots and in miles an hour. We can choose whether or not to turn off the windshield reflections and we can also turn on or off a persistent oil and fuel state on the aircraft which is great. The rolling resistance option we'll talk more about later on but essentially there we have a custom ground model. On the exterior preferences page again we have a whole host of options, here we can add or remove a pitot cover. We can also choose our pitot type between both an English and an Australian variant. We can open up the rear luggage door, we can choose between a tail skid and a tail wheel. And again for the Venturi we can choose between either an English variant or an Australian variant. 
As far as the prop options go, we can also choose whether or not we add or remove the spinner. And finally, we can actually choose whether or not we add or remove the visual model of the prop altogether. It does seem that with most of the exterior options, you do have to select those with each new flight. Next, we have the engine start page. Here we have a couple of options and also features to help us run through the engine start. So once again, in terms of engine realism, we can choose between hard and easy. And that will basically dictate how accurate we actually need to be in terms of the start process with the Gypsy Major engine. We have an option to add and remove the wheel chocks, which are also required for the start. You can also use the part brake to set the chocks. There's an indication as well as to the engine priming state. Again, if you want to operate the engine in the hard difficulty, then you will need to prime correctly. We also have an onboard autopilot via the tablet, which is a nice little feature, especially given that the Tiger Moth is a two crew aeroplane. You can essentially simulate there having the front pilot flying the aircraft. It's a pretty basic autopilot, but I think that's a very reasonable concession given that the real world aircraft isn't fitted with one. So we just have an autopilot master and we can track both a heading and an altitude as well as a vertical speed. Lastly, we also have a radio page which gives us basic COM1 and COM2 functionality as well as a transponder. So if you do want to take the Tiger Moth out on something like VATSIM, then the aircraft has you covered there. And as demonstrated here, we can cycle through a number of different airspeed indicators. The same goes with the altimeter. So I think you'll agree it's pretty impressive the level of customization we have with the Ants airplane de Havilland Tiger Moth. I think it really goes to show that a lot of care and attention has been put into the aircraft, which I was certainly hoping to see. I'm a big fan of the Tiger Moth. And again, as I say, a big fan of Ants' work previously. Anyway, that just about wraps up everything for now. We're certainly going to get a lot of opportunity to see the cockpit throughout the flight. And I'll try and give you every opportunity as well to see the external model as we make our way up towards Talgarth. So here we are once again on the ground in Abergavenny, having just boarded the Ants airplanes to Havilland DH-82 Tiger Moth. As you can see, both ourselves and our passenger now comfortably strapped in, so we'll close out the cockpit door. Sounds on the door there could use a little bit of work. There are some sounds associated with its operation, which is great, but there's no real bang there as we close up. Anyway, we've carried out the walk around, chocks are in place, the engine covers have both been closed up and the pitot cover there as well has been removed. So for the before start checks, the intercommunication system is connected. Tail trim lever can go to fully aft. Nice animation there on the lever and we are set fully aft. All switches, namely we're talking about the magnetos there, are both off. We have both the front and rear set of magneto switches. Heel control lever is set to open, throttle is closed. Ordinarily, starting the Tiger Moth as a two-man operation, we'd have a member of ground crew down there on the engine, ready to both prime the carburetor and also to hand-turn the prop. In the Ants Aeroplane version of the aircraft, we have a couple of options there. We can actually operate both the primer and the prop ourselves externally, which is really nice. We can also activate the options via the tablet. And lastly as well, we can assign key binds to each of those functions, which again, I think is great. It saves breaking the immersion, hopping in and out of the aircraft or using the tablet. One thing I have noticed, though, the primer... Keybind currently doesn't seem to work, so we've actually primed up the carburetor here ahead of time. So once again, the chocks are in place. The ground crew would call switches off. And again, confirming the magnetos are off. Throttle is closed. Fuel selector is on. We'd flood the carburetor again. We've done that ahead of time. And the ground crew would then turn the prop through four half turns to get some fuel going into the cylinders. So we have one. Two. Three, and four. Next, you call throttle set. We need to put the throttle just forward of the fully closed position. Starting the aircraft is actually really nice. There's both an easy and a hard startup option. With the hard startup option, you'd actually need to have the throttle set correctly, the engine prime correctly, the mag set correctly, etc., which does make the aircraft quite nice in terms of its modelling. Anyway, next the ground crew would call contact, so the front impulse magneto can go on both with the forward and rear cockpit controls. Ordinarily, they're not interconnected, but we do have an option there for the add-on, which again is a nice little concession for the sim. So already for the start, we'll come fully back on the stick, and again the ground crew will hand turn the prop. And we do have a good start. So just bring up the throttle, we want to idle around 1000 RPM. Now we have a good start, the rear magneto can go on there as well. All pressure has come up, we're looking for a 35 PSI there as a minimum. 
And for the warm-up, we need to idle around 900 to 1,000 RPM. Currently idling around 950. Waiting there for around four minutes for the engine to warm up. Trim controls, we'll check for full and free. So it's fully forward. And again, we'll come back to fully aft. So the trim is set, the throttle friction has been set, mixture is set to fully rich, a little bit unusual for some I'm sure, but fully aft position actually correlates to a full rich mixture in the Tiger Moth. Altimeter, the checklist calls to set to zero, but we'll leave it on uh, Q&H today since we're flying cross country. Showing about 240 feet there at the moment, which is correct. Airspeed indicator is checked and currently showing knots. The placard there are knots as well, there are options as we've discussed for miles an hour. Flight instruments are checked. We'll lock up our P8 compass. We can set that later on. Slot lever is locked. Fire extinguisher not installed on the aircraft. And again, just checking that both magneto switches are up. Fuel quantity. You can see there the gauge on the top of the fuel tank. Just a simple float type gauge showing more or less a fully fueled aircraft, which is what we're expecting to see. And for the flight controls, we have full left pull right and neutral, pull up, pull down and neutral and on the rudder, pull left, pull right and neutral. So the flight controls are checked. For the run up we're waiting at least four minutes here. We'll say we've had four minutes now for the sake of the video and again we're looking for a minimum of 35 psi on the oil pressure. Looks like we've just about got that there. It's hovering around 30, 35. So coming fully back on the stick and for the run-up, coming up to 1600 RPM. Engine sounds are interesting. I don't know how accurate they are to the real-world Tiger Moth. They're quite raspy, quite rattly. Hopefully, I know there's a few Tiger Moth flyers who tend to watch my videos, so if you could let me know in the comments, that would be great. So at 1600 RPM, we'll check the mags. We're looking for a maximum of 100 RPM drop. Showing they're about 70 RPM drop. Come back to both. Back up to 1600. And same drop there on the other mag. Again, coming back up to both. We need to open the throttle fully. We're looking for a minimum of 1825 RPM. Nominally, it should be around 2100. And bang on there, showing 2100. All pressure, we're looking for at least 40 to 45 psi, which we have. And coming all the way back to idle, we should be idling around 550 to 600 RPM. And looks like here we're idling around 700, so slightly high there on the numbers. And once again, coming back up to 1000. So that's the run up complete, we are now ready for the taxi. Looking at the windsock there, there's really not much wind around. We're departing out to the north, so we'll make our way out towards the northerly runway. Right, so we are now down at the holding point for the northerly runway. In terms of the aircraft's ground handling, I think we'll talk more about that perhaps towards the end of the video or maybe during the flight itself. For the before takeoff checks then, the elevator trim can go back to neutral. Throttle friction has been set, mixture is fully rich, fuel control lever is set fully open. We can unlock the slots. And once again, just checking the flight controls. They are full and free. It's all clear on the left. And all clear on the right. Again, we're going to be departing off the northerly runway, straight out towards the town of Abergavenny itself, which is out to the north. Obviously, visibility in the Tiger Moth is not great out the front, particularly with the passenger on board, so track R really coming to its own here. Getting ourselves nicely lined up. 
And for the takeoff, just coming all the way up to full power. RPMs look good, all pressure is checked. The Tiger Moth actually handles really nicely on the takeoff. There's no tendency to swing in any particular direction. The aircraft does want to maintain more or less straight down the runway, and directional control feels good as well. Almost lifting off itself, but just needing a slight back pressure on the stick to get the Tiger Moth off the ground. Nicely above the trees now, so we'll pitch for around 58 knots here in the climb. And just waiting until we come up through 300 feet, we'll come back to our climb power setting. A few birds passing off there on the left wing, courtesy of FS Birds, which we've discussed before, but I think it's a really nice add-on. It does just bump up the immersion ever so slightly more. The birds themselves are not modelled particularly brilliantly, and the animations look a bit clunky up close, but again, it does just ramp up that immersion thing. A little bit more wildlife en route. Anyway, back to 2050 RPM for the climb. We'll go for around 60 knots. Initially, as mentioned, just tracking out towards Abergavenny, which you can see quite readily there off at our one o'clock. We've got both the road, the railway line, passing out towards the east of the town. So after the town, we're going to be turning out towards Crick Howell, another small town out towards the northwest. Heading for that is going to be 296. So we can set that on the P8 compass. And we can start the turn now. We're mostly just going to be navigating by features today. We've got plenty of features en route, obviously good VFR conditions. Nevertheless, time out towards Crick Howell is four minutes. Just coming up on 3.4, so should be arriving overhead about 3.8. We've got the A40 just down below on the left wing. Also a nice river there, which we can follow both of those out towards the town. And just coming up through 1,000 feet, we'll level off around 1,500 feet initially. So good on the RPM and the oil pressure. Leaving Abergavenny behind us. In terms of our tracking then, gross error check again, we've got the A40, that's a nice feature, and we've got the high terrain as well off to the right of the aircraft, as we should expect to see according to the chart. Just coming up on 1500 feet, so getting ready to level the aircraft off momentarily. You can see the climb performance in the Tiger Moth is pretty leisurely. We've got uh, climb power there. We're only doing around 500 feet per minute rate of climb. So pitching the nose down, leveling off, letting that speed build up. We're looking for a cruise speed of around 75 knots. And we'll come back to our cruise power setting now. We're going to go for 2000 RPM. Yeah, so far very much enjoying flying the Tiger Moth. 
Just putting in minor pressures there on the stick. The flight path is very slow to change. If you really want to perform some more aggressive manoeuvring, you do have to be a bit more positive on the controls. In terms of the ground handling, I said we'd discuss that a little bit more. By default, there's certainly not enough drag on the aircraft over the ground in the sim, which is a fault of the sim, not the aircraft itself. The developer has actually provided an option there to increase the ground friction of the aircraft via the tablet, which is really nice, but I find that the ground handling then is a little bit strange. The aircraft tends to uh, creep forward rather than it being a smooth transition. So currently I find the best option in the aircraft is just to stick with the default ground handling, just ride the brakes a little bit. The aircraft is fitted with brakes and overall ground handling very easy as well than the Tiger Moth. The rudder authority felt to be uh, very positive there, it was very easy to get the aircraft turned. Almost felt like we had tailwheel steering more or less. So again, a little bit hit and miss currently, but I think the developers done the best that they can within the limitations of the sim. Anyway, we've got Crick Howe here just coming up off the nose. And we are on flight plan time, coming up on 3.8. Uh, we're going to continue on our heading for now, tracking out towards the lake. And the time for that, we're looking around 5 minutes. So expecting to arrive just to beam the lake at time 4.3. Just gained a little bit of altitude here, so we'll get ourselves back down to 1,500 feet. But certainly the Tiger Moth, very pleasant for cruising around in. Again, pretty stable actually, once you've got the aircraft trimmed out. Don't need much in terms of control input to maintain altitude. In terms of visibility, obviously a bit limited out the front as discussed, but front and left quarters pretty good. The wing does rather block the view just down below the aircraft. And once more, low and slow, certainly the order of the day. Typically you're going to be looking at around 80, 75 knots in terms of cruise speed. So we have the A40 that's peeling off towards the left, that goes out towards the uh, town of Brecon, out towards the north. And the A479 should be just off the nose. That leads off towards the high terrain. Targarth actually located just out to the north of this high terrain. We could follow the A479 here directly towards the airfield, but we'll take the long route around today just to enjoy the Tiger Moth here for a little bit longer. I'm not really sure we're actually going to spot the lake that's uh, waypoint 3 since it's buried away somewhat in the hills and we're fairly low altitude here, but again there's plenty of other features that we can pick off along the way to help us identify our positioning. You can see we have the ridge line here off at our 2 o'clock, we need to cross over the other side of that. And there's another little hill just over the other side. That's a good little visual landmark there. We're looking for a lake just out to the northeast of that, just off the town of Langorse. To get a little bit more of a feel for the flight model here, we're going to carry out some manoeuvres before we actually land at Talgarth. So we'll come up to 2100 RPM here, climb the aircraft, get a little bit of altitude in hand before we carry out our manoeuvring. Just to use a repertoire, we'll try a loop. I think that'll be good fun in the Tiger Moth. Probably try a stall. We'll see if we can induce a spin as well. So I've got 2100 RPM. Again, oil pressure looking good. We'll get the speed back to around 60 knots. Just coming up on 2,000 feet, I think we need at least 2,500 feet here. We'll try and get closer to 3 before we start carrying out our manoeuvring. The A40 leads off towards Brecon, and interestingly there actually the A470 leading away from Brecon, which if memory serves me correctly actually leads back out towards the Mac loop. Not that we're planning on heading over that way today. 
You can see quite a few sheep down there in the fields. Not unusual by any means in this part of the world. And we'll just get ourselves up to altitude here. We'll carry out our manoeuvres overhead the lake just so we don't lose our bearings en route. If we follow the contours of the hills out towards the north thereafter, that'll take us in towards Talgarth. You can see Brecon a little bit more clearly now, off to 10 o'clock. Almost up to 2,500 feet, again climbing in the Tiger Moth. You need to have a little bit of time on your hands. But I'm sure that's perfectly true to life, the real-world aircraft. Not particularly powerful and obviously quite a draggy airframe as well. And there's definitely a certain pleasure to be had in taking your time and just really enjoying the flight for the sake of the flight. So it's 2,500 feet. We're going to go for the loop first, just so we don't bleed off too much energy initially. For any aerobatic maneuvers, we need to lock up the slots. We'll just climb a little bit further here. To enter into the loop itself, we want to be up at 115 knots. It's pretty hard to build up much speed in the Tiger Moth, even with full power and straight and level, so we really do have to dive the aircraft to get the speed. Anyway, just coming up on 2800 feet, I think that's enough altitude in hand here for the loop. So we'll level off, just build up what airspeed we can here at 2050 on the RPM. You can see we are pretty slow to accelerate, even in the level attitude. So if we do want to build up more speed here, we're going to have to put the aircraft into a dive, as I say. And again, we're looking for 150 knots. We'll come back on the stick. So back on the stick, you do have to be pretty positive on the controls here. We bleed off speed pretty quickly. So we need to make sure we get over the loop before we lose all of that airspeed. And over the top. Overall, the aircraft there feeling pretty much as I would expect. Again, having to be pretty positive on the controls to get the aircraft through the top of the loop. You do have to be pretty cognizant of your energy when performing aerobatic manoeuvres. So we'll try a power on stall here, see if we can get the aircraft to spin. All the way back on the stick, wanting to drop the right wing there. And sure enough, entering into the spin to recover. Back off the throttle, just releasing the controls is enough there to recover from the spin itself. And lastly, we'll just go for power off stall here, up through 2,000 feet. We should be able to stall incredibly slowly. Even with those slots locked up, we're looking at around 30 knots. And the stall is very placid in the Tiger Moth, the nose drops. That's just about it. Almost going into a spin there. But certainly with the slots open as well, very placid as I say. You can stall the aircraft around 30, even 25 knots. And the nose will drop down. You'll lose quite a bit of altitude fairly quickly, but that's about it. Anyway, we'll unlock the slots once again for the approach. Again, we can just follow the terrain here. Taking us in towards Talgarth. Little gross error check, we've got the lake behind us. So, back up to 2000 RPM for the time being. We'll get ourselves back down to around 1500 feet. So we're going to head inbound towards Talgarth here. We'll pick up the A479. Once we hit the town, taking it out towards the south, that should help us to pretty readily identify the uh, airfield itself. The town's just off our one o'clock. We'll keep a good eye out for the airfield, though. If we spot it beforehand, then we can always just fly direct. I think we might have it off at our two o'clock there. There's a fairly sizable light coloured field. That's just out to the uh, west of one of the runways, I believe. If memory serves me correctly from our last flight inbound towards Talgarth. 
play it back down to 1500 feet, back up to 2000 RPM. We'll get our downward checks done now. So, brakes are checked and off, undercarriage is down, mixture is rich, fuel pump we don't have, fuel quantity is checked, down to around about 60% now. Flight instruments are checked, landing light we don't have, harness is secure. And pretty comfortable at this point, we do have the airfield visual identified, so we're just going to head straight towards Talgarth. We'll do a quick orbit around the field, pick a runway. Again, there shouldn't be too much wind around, so we can choose whichever runway suits us best. We'll probably come in from the west, which is our present direction. There's Talgarth itself, the town off the left wing. We've got the A479 just down below us. And sure enough, we do have the airfield just off the uh, 11 o'clock there, just off to the left of the nose. Confirming we do have the slots unlocked. Targarth itself actually not modelled in the sim. The airfield is visually there as a result of the photo imagery, but there's no selectable runway, so I did actually have to download a bit of third-party scenery here just to have the airfield available as an option. It's actually a gliding airfield in the real world, but I'm sure they'll uh, have to borrow their runway for the day. So you can see we've got an east-westerly runway just passing off the left wing, and then a uh, north-south runway. I think we'll take the east-west, as I say, although it's a Bit of an upslope there, so we'll have to count off that during the landing. So we'll just join on crosswind. And turning ourselves onto a downwind. Heading back out towards Talgarth. We have our downward checks out of the way already. Going to make a nice long slow approach here in the Tiger Moth since we don't really have any options other than side slipping the aircraft if we end up a little bit high and fast. So we'll just extend our downwind a little bit further here. We can start reducing the speed as well now back towards 60 miles now for the approach. Or rather 60 knots. So we are good there on the speed, we'll turn on to base. Looks like we're all clear on final. Again, we've got the A479 down below us. And we'll come all the way back to idle on the throttle, more or less. Looking pretty good in terms of profile currently. Again, visibility rather restricted here with the passenger up front, so we'll just side slip slightly just to help with the visibility. Continuing to come back here on the trim. And as discussed, we do have that upsloping runway, so we'll have to uh, account for that in the flare. So all the way back on the throttle. Holding the aircraft off. A little bit of a float. Let's touch down. Looks like we touched down right wheel first there. Again, we do have brakes fitted, so coming onto the brakes. And all the way back on the stick. And we're down. So there you go, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed our outing in the Ants Airplanes, the Havilland DHH2 Tiger Moth. 
As I mentioned during the introduction, this was a product that I was very much looking forward to in the sim, and overall it didn't disappoint. I do have one or two minor gripes with it, we'll discuss those first and then we'll move on to my positives, but again, overall I think a very nice, well-rounded product, and clearly quite a bit of care and attention has been put into the product by the developer. Starting then with the texturing, as we discussed earlier on during the video, I don't think it's bad necessarily, but it doesn't quite hold up to modern Microsoft Flight Simulator standards, at least externally. The resolution of some of the textures in certain areas could be a little bit higher, although again for me it doesn't really detract from the aircraft. Really the only thing I noticed there was that the PBR materials, there didn't seem to be much to differentiate between the metal parts of the aircraft and the canvas parts of the aircraft. The fuselage of the aircraft in particular to me looked to be very uniform, it almost had a slightly plasticky feel to it. And so whilst I do think that the Tiger Moth looks very nice, again it doesn't look quite as photorealistic as most other add-ons that we're now seeing in the sim. Another minor negative, again some of the aircraft options aren't persistent which does mean you have to reselect them with each flight. It's only a very minor inconvenience of course but it would be nice to have each option be persistent, it does tend to make the aircraft feel a little bit more like it's your own. There were just one or two areas of the aircraft as well which I feel could use a few sound improvements. Having gone away and watched a couple of cockpit videos of the Tiger Moth, it actually sounds as though the Gypsy Major isn't too far off in terms of what Ants Aeroplanes has modelled. I think the engine note internally is still perhaps just a touch raspy and rattly, but again, I'll leave that to you to decide for yourselves. It was really great to see that for the most part the add-on makes use of custom sounds for things like ground handling and cockpit controls. So many other add-ons in the sim use the default Microsoft Flight Simulator sounds and often they're completely inappropriate. So once again, that choice and effort is very much to be commended, although there were just one or two sounds which we touched on throughout the flight that I feel could use some improvements. My last couple of negative points relate to the aircraft's flight model. Firstly, the ground handling. As discussed, by default the aircraft doesn't produce anywhere near enough drag on the ground. It doesn't sound to say the issue is the developer's fault, and again, he has made mention of this, he has gone to the effort of trying to work around it. Having the high drag handling option on the ground is nice, although I think it needs a little bit of refinement. Currently the aircraft does still tend to creep forward using the high drag option and I'll just demonstrate that to you now. So you can see here we do have a little bit of power on and certainly the ground friction is much improved but we tend to be moving at a stop start pace which is quite noticeable, the aircraft doesn't gradually transition into forward movement. To be clear though, once again I'm not going to fault the developer too highly for that issue since it's clearly a workaround that he's tried to affect. Hopefully things can be tweaked up in the future just to get a slightly smoother ground handling experience. Lastly, touching on the flight model, I think the aircraft actually handles very nicely for the most part. It felt good during the takeoff, pretty good as well during the landing. The Tiger Moth generally seemed to perform very closely to the real world numbers throughout our flight, at least from what I could see from the pilot's operating handbook. The only thing I would say about the flight model, and it's probably not even a flight model issue per se, but it would be nice to have just a little bit more feedback from the aircraft in terms of vibration and sound. That particular issue though can probably be fixed up to a large degree if you're a user of FS Realistic. Personally though, I just felt there was one or two areas of the flight where the aircraft didn't have quite as much vitality as I was expecting. It would have been nice again to hear some more creaking, rattling, groaning and a bit more vibration throughout. But that just about covers my negatives and again really all of them are fairly minor, I'm really nitpicking since the product is very nice overall. In terms of my positives, I think we'll start with the level of customization. it's really great to see all those options available via the tablet. The aircraft is certainly far more customizable than I was expecting at this sort of price point, and really the product does go above and beyond in many areas given the price point. The same is true of the engine modelling, really nice startup sequence there, it's great, the engine will not fire if you don't start it up correctly and you have the hard mode selected. Brilliant as well that we do have the persistent options there for both the fuel and the oil. And again, if you don't top up the oil system on a semi-regular basis you are going to suffer issues, ultimately you can suffer an engine failure. The same goes with the spark plug fouling, by no means is it the first aircraft at this point that we've seen in the sim to model such things, but again at this sort of price point I think pretty impressive. Modelling is generally very good throughout the aircraft, I particularly like as I say the cockpit, I think that looks really nice. Texturing internally looks very period accurate, I like the colorization. generally I like the weathering effects as well. Really nice to have the different gauge options, easy to change out as well and the gauges are all very nicely modelled, very easy to read. Some of the click spots internally are a little bit clunky but again everything is very usable for the most part and I couldn't find anything in the cockpit which wasn't operable. So in terms of systems fidelity I think we could almost say that's study level really. Obviously again the Tiger Moth is a pretty basic aircraft but everything seems to be modelled quite nicely both in terms of normal functionality as well as induced failures. Flight model we've already discussed, for the most part I thought it was pretty nice, the aircraft is enjoyable to fly, feels reasonable on the controls, it's pretty stable as well. 
And in terms of hitting the numbers, I thought that was pretty impressive. I tried as best I could to operate the aircraft as per the real world pilot's operating handbook. And generally speaking, power settings, speeds, rates of climb, everything seemed to be pretty well modelled there. So I do like the flight modelling of the aircraft for the most part. I very much like the systems modelling and I was really impressed to see just how much care and attention has been put into the onboard tablet and the various options available on the Tiger Moth. All in all, as I mentioned during the opening to the video, I was really looking forward to the Ants Airplanes de Havilland DH-82 Tiger Moth, and generally speaking the product has not disappointed. By and large it is a very nice rendition of a beautiful and rather iconic aircraft. Once again it's an aircraft that's not going to get you anywhere in a hurry necessarily, but it is great fun for cruising around. It's for me at least by far the best vintage tail dragger biplane that we've seen in the sim to date. Once again I do hope you found this review to be of use, if you did please consider giving it a like. And if you do want to see more content from the channel then please consider subscribing as well. As ever a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support, it is very much appreciated. I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are, take really good care and I will see you all again soon.